Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing really, really well. So I finally did it. I finally picked up this book. So this is In Every Generation by Kendara Blake. And I've had this sitting on my shelf since January. So I pre-ordered this book when I heard that it was coming out. And I was so scared to read it. I was so scared to read it because I'm such a Buffy fan and I'm such a Buffy purist that I was scared to pick this up because I thought it was going to really let me down. And especially after reading Kirsten White's Slayer, um, actually I only just read the first book in the series, the, the book Slayer, it was so far from the story of Buffy and Sunnydale and everything. I didn't like how she uh, wrote the characters. Now in, in that book, there are no kind of legacy characters. It's kind of a continuing story. But even so, it didn't feel like, it didn't feel like Buffy. It didn't feel like the Buffyverse. It was so far removed from what I know and what I love of that whole thing. Like even, you know, I know the even the original movie, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, doesn't really fit in with the whole Buffy verse that we know like Sarah Michelle Gellar but it, it still fits in relatively well even though it's super cheesy and and of course it has different characters and stuff but it does it does kind of fit in fairly well but with Kirsten White's book it was just it was really disappointing and I I was just so let down by it but this felt like Sunnydale it really did so just to give you a quick overview well, first of all, the book is beautiful. So this is all embossed on the front here. It's just gorgeous. And then on the naked cover, it has a the Buffy Bee stamped into the cover. So I love that. So just to give you a quick overview. So we are actually following Willow's daughter. Her name is Frankie and she becomes the next Slayer. So, and this is kind of a take right after season seven. So it, it ignores everything that happened in the comics or any other spinoffs. And it goes right from where we left off in season seven of the show. And um, the Hellmouth is now closed. Sunnydale is rebuilt. There's a new high school, the whole thing. She goes to Sunnydale High. So it very much has that real feeling that we're back in Sunnydale. It was fantastic. And of course, because she's Willow's daughter and she realizes she's a slayer, she is going to be the very first witch slayer or slayer witch, however you want to put it. Because of course, Willow being, you know, a big bad herself at a time. So of course, there's a whole question of how does Willow have a daughter? Of course, because she's gay. So you're wondering, okay, who's the father? How does that wrap in there? I really enjoyed the concept of how Kendara Blake came up with the character Frankie. Love it. But so like I said, Frankie it now has to train as a slayer. She's also a witch, so she's doing her witch training. Willow is in here, um, of course, because Frankie being her daughter. And she's going to the new Sunnydale High, and she develops this whole new group of Scoobies. And I don't want to allude to the other uh, legacy characters that are in here, but there are legacy characters in here and they feel like those characters. They do. They're written very, very much like those characters. You could tell that Kendara Blake really took her notes as she was re-watching the show so that she could write them properly. The dialect, the type of things that they say, is very much, it very much feels like those characters. Willow is very much written properly. There's only one character who I think could have been done a little bit better. I'm not even gonna say who it is. Maybe we'll have a spoiler discussion at some point of this book. I don't know, maybe I'll do a, like a live or maybe I'll just do a, a, like a spoiler video. So, um, there was just one character that felt a little bit off, but number one, it wasn't big enough to throw me off at all. And number two, that character was so fantastic in the show that I don't think even how hard you tried, you're not gonna get that character to be perfectly like they were in the show. I don't think you would. 
So legacy characters, new group of Scoobies, and then the plot setups and the, um, the villains, the big bads and all of that, it very much had the same feeling of the original Sunnydale. So you had kind of a smaller sort of thing, kind of spooky spooky going on, and then you had a bigger villain that was kind of like an overall villain that was, you know, the new person in Sunnydale, that they're the new demon in town. And that demon was very believable. I really believe that if the show had have continued, they definitely would have had this person in the show. Absolutely. And it would have been written the way it was. That villain uh, had a lot of reflections of glory. And Glory was, I think, would be my favorite villain out of the entire series. I loved Glory. She was great. And this new villain very much has, um, I think she took inspiration from Glory to write this, this new villain because she, she, she was great. I, I really enjoyed that whole aspect. So the plot set up, the way it was, the way the story flowed, it was very, very much like a season of Buffy. This was a whole season, like, I would say that this is like the new season eight of Buffy. If they decided that they were going to take this book and use it to make a new show, I would be the first person to watch it. I would want to be behind the scenes. <laughs> it was so, so, so good. This was I think the closest thing that you could read that would feel like the show. And the other thing that was in here that I really loved was um, there were Easter eggs from the old show. So not gonna give them all away, but just for example, uh, there is one section where they're discussing Slayer Fest 98. And, you know, there's a whole kind of joke going on between the kids because they don't know what it is. And they're like, maybe it was some kind of party or something. So they alluded to Slayer Fest 98. And then Frankie at one point decided to put on something from her mom's wardrobe. And then some of the legacy characters saw what she was wearing and it, like it, it just alluded to something that had happened back then, like back during the show. So whether you're a new Buffy reader, an old Buffy reader, I think anybody is going to enjoy this. I thought it was great. I loved every minute of it. There is absolutely nothing bad I can say about this book. It felt like Sunnydale. It felt like the Buffyverse and she did a hell of a job. So I actually sent Kendara Blake a message on Instagram and I was like, dude, like it couldn't have been done any better. So if you've read this book, let me know. Let me know what you thought. And Kelsey, I know from Slime and Slashers, I know you're going to pick up this book eventually. We have to get on a Zoom and talk about it because I need another Buffy fan to talk about this book with. So thought it was great. Five stars. Please, if you're a Buffy fan, pick up this book. Guaranteed you're going to enjoy it. If you don't, I mean, we can debate about it as well. So that's everything I wanted to say. I didn't want to spoil anything, but I was so pleased. I just finished this book uh, last night and I had a smile on my face the whole time. I couldn't have been more happy with it. So that was fantastic. So that's everything for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a question or a comment down below because you know I love chatting with you guys. But until next time, stay spooky everybody. Bye.